Hey everyone, this is Kevin from thechesswebsite.com and today we're going to be going over the top six checkmates that you need to know to improve your win percentage. We're going to be focusing on middle and late game patterns that lead to these checkmates. So without further ado, let's get into the list of the top six checkmates. Coming in at number six is the Arabian mate, which has the knight and the rook teaming up for a nice checkmate. The rook can come to g8 in this example. The king can't take the rook, it's protected by the knights. And it can't come to the h7 square because that square is also attacked by the knight. In this example, the white knight and the rook team up for Arabian mate. With rook to g8 checkmate, the king can't move even if the rook here on h7 was not there. That square is blocked off by the knight on f6. So white should do everything in their power to get to this position. If we come back just a few moves, it's white's turn, and white can play the move queen to h6. There's only two legal moves. The king can't move, because this knight here on f6 is blocking the g8 square. So black can move over with this rook on h7, but as we already looked at, this is Arabian mate right here with rook to g8. That's checkmate. Or the other option is to play bishop to h7. And then white has a queen sacrifice. Queen takes here. The king cannot recapture because of the knight. The rook is forced to recapture. And this is the position that white's trying to get to because you have that pattern recognition of knowing how to set up the mates. White now is able to sacrifice material and has Arabian mate here with rook to g8. Coming at number five, we have Bowden's mate, which involves two bishops attacking the king, which usually is castled on the queen side, and the bishops do all the work. You don't need any other pieces. In this example, white can play the move bishop to a6, checkmate. In this example, you can see the white king is castled on the queen side. Black very nicely has the light square bishop here on f5, which is attacking all of these light squares, reducing the number of moves that the white king can move. Now black can play the move bishop to a3, and Bowden's mate takes effect. White is checkmated, the king cannot move, so black should do everything in their power to reach this position. As we take a step back one move, we can see that it's black's move, and black has the move queen takes here on c3, setting up Bowden's mate. The king is under attack, it can't come to b1, because that square is attacked by the bishop here on f5. The only legal move is to take with the pawn on c3, and now black has the move bishop to a3 checkmate. So anytime your opponent castles on the queen side, see if you can maneuver your bishops to set up Bowden's mate. Coming in at number four, we have the opera mate, where the bishop and rook combine for a nice checkmate on the opponent's king. You can see the bishop here on g5 is attacking these dark squares and is also protecting the square here on d8. The rook can come to d8, and the king can't move along this eighth rank, and it also can't come to the e7 square because the bishop, it's blocked in by the pawn here on f7, which could really be any piece except for a knight, which could then capture the rook here. And so in this position, the black king is checkmated. The best example to show the opera mate is to show the famous game that actually gave this checkmate its name. And that is from the 1858 famous game between Paul Morphy, the American chess master, and two strong amateurs. They played this at an opera house in Paris. Paul Morphy playing the white pieces, play the move bishop takes on d7, check, forking the queen, the strong amateurs not wanting to lose their queen with queen takes on d7, and then losing to rook takes on d7, instead play the move knight takes on d7. You can see that this opens up for the bishop here on g5 to attack all of these squares here on this dark diagonal, 
and also opening up for the rook to eventually come to d8. All Paul Morphy now had to do was play the move queen to b8, check. The knight takes here on b8. No other options here. And once the knight's out of the way, Paul Morphy was able to play the opera mate, which did not have the name at the time, but play the move rook to d8, checkmate. Coming in at number three, we have Anastasia's mate, which involves the knight and the rook trapping the opponent's king on the side of the board. White has the move rook to h3, and you can see that the knight blocks off the squares g8 and g6, and the rook here on h3 blocks off the move h6 and h8, and this is checkmate. Back in 2003, Magnus Carlsen used the Anastasia's mate to surprise his opponent with checkmate. You can see in this example, he has his knight here on e2, perfectly placed, to block off the g1 and the g3 squares from the king. All he needed to do was to bring his rook here on e4 over to the h-file, and it would be checkmate. So Magnus Carlsen sacrificed his queen by playing queen to h5. The only legal move for white is to take with the pawn. That frees open the rook to now come to h4. And Magnus Carlsen was able to checkmate using Anastasia's mate. Coming in at number two, we have the back rank mates. One of the most common mating patterns that you will see and that is when your opponent has their king on the back rank. For black, that's going to be the eighth rank. For white, that's going to be on the first rank here. They've usually castled. They're behind their pawns, so it does seem like it's safe. But then you can see here white can play rook to b8. And the king is under attack and has nowhere to go. Could only move along this eighth rank anyway. And so you have the back rank mate. Many times the back rank mate has allowed a player to get the checkmate even when it looks like all hope is lost. You can see in this position black is clearly winning looking to checkmate the opponent in the next couple moves but it's white's move and white knows that the back rank mate is unavoidable. They can play rook to b8 and all black can do is delay the inevitable and that is to first play bishop to c8. After the rook takes here, check. Then the queen comes to d8. After the rook takes, rook comes up here to e8. And black continues to lose material. And at the end of it, the king is still trapped behind the pawns here on this 8th rank. And white wins, even though they were down a ton of material, with the back rank mate. Before we get into the final checkmate, if you haven't already, if you wouldn't mind, please hitting the like button. Also curious in the comments below what your favorite checkmate pattern is to use in a chess game. So without further ado, let's get into the final checkmate, and that is going to be the smothered mate. The reason I had this number one is if you've ever pulled it off, it's just one of the most satisfying things in all of chess. And the most simplistic way to show it is in this example, white can play the move knight to f7. And you can see the king here on h8 is completely surrounded by its own pieces and it cannot move. And in this case, black loses the game. Sometimes it takes a few moves to set up the smother mate, but if you can actually pull it off, it's well worth it in the end. White would really like it if the rook here was on g8. In that case, white could just play knight to f7, and that would be a smothered mate. So the goal in this position is to get black to move his rook here to g8. White can do this by first starting out with knight to f7, check. King is forced to move to g8, the only legal move. And then knight to h6. This is double check. Both the knight and the queen are attacking the king. And the king is forced to move. Anytime a king is in double check, they have to move. They can't come to f8, so the king has to come back to h8. Now the main difference with the knight here on h6 is it is defending and attacking this square here 
on G8. The king can't move there, and so white has the move queen to G8. This is check, but since the king can't take it, it's defended by the knight, black is forced to take with the rook here on G8. And now, white has forced the rook to come to G8, trapping the king, and white can deliver the final blow with knight to F7. Hopefully everyone enjoyed this list of the top six checkmates that you should know. If there's other lists that you'd like me to make, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching the video, and I'll see you next time.